Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 1st of October 2018 and the time has just gone 12.20 British summer time. Well, equity markets have had a fairly decent start to the European session today. Uh, essentially, the news uh, from, from, the, from North America overnight that the US and, and Canada have reached a trade agreement uh, to, kind of, to effectively bring into play a new and revised or revamped or renegotiated NAFTA North American Free Trade Agreement. Uh, and this has actually boosted uh, that market sentiment in Asia overnight and it's also managed to list sentiment here in Europe. I'm also looking at a much higher start for the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. Um, the US and Mexico managed to uh, agree their component of the, of the revised or revamped or, or new NAFTA um, uh, deal back in late August and there was a deadline of uh, midnight North Amer- you know, uh, US time last night which um, which was an agreement was reached just, with, just beforehand. Uh, so the news of the agreement has boosted equity markets essentially all around the world. Uh, there's obviously ongoing issues with, with the trading relationship between the US and China, but for the time being, uh, for the time being, traders are just focusing on the fact that uh, Donald Trump managed to actually bring in the Canadians into the vote. Uh, so there, that's the kind of the big kind of big picture. It's been a relatively quiet day in terms of actual um, individual news stories. Uh, the, the big one would be that the Ryanair uh, issued a profit warning. They said that they lowered the, their full-year profit guidance. They blamed higher costs, uh, industrial action, and also compensation for flight cancellations uh, as the reason for their uh, lowering of the, of the profit guidance. But they're still hoping to make, expecting to make over 1 billion euros uh, profit, so they're still actually in, in fairly decent shape. Um, take a look now at what's going on at the week ahead. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com. And under the news and analysis section, you will find the week ahead article among all other articles that we uh, that we write. Uh, so today, turning our attention to tomorrow, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia um, are will release their interest rate decision overnight, and uh, no, no change is, is expected. We're expecting the interest rate in Australia to remain unchanged at 1.5%. Uh, also tomorrow, uh, we have third quarter figures out from PepsiCo. On Wednesday, we have first half figures from from. Uh, Tesco. Um, we have the IPO of uh, Aston Martin on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have fir- first half figures from Ted Baker. On Friday, we have Canadian unemployment, and also we have US non farm payrolls on Friday as well. So, uh, not non farm payrolls will be will be the most important update of the week. Uh, turning back now to our trading platform, uh, as I mentioned, the week ahead article can be found on the news analysis section of our website. But some of the articles that we do actually get posted to the trading platform itself under insights, which is this tab here, which I've opened. And insights can be found under market pulse, second option down. And also what we have on our trading platform is the chart forum. A chart forum is essentially, um, myself and some of the analysts take a screenshot of, of a particular chart and write a few hundred words uh, commentary of what we potentially could see in terms of price action. And it's also available uh, for, for, for comment, commentary by clients. And the chart forum can be found once again under market market pulse third option down so please feel free to check out those uh those those tools and also for chart forum please feel 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 free to actually uh post on it uh turning our attention now to what, what's going on actually in the markets i'll take a quick look now at some of the major markets starting off with the FTSE 100 uh so the FTSE 100 uh, as you can see here um kind of early september to mid september so had a fairly decent run we saw a steady increase in positive momentum and the MACD indicator but we have seen the market kind of turn over ever so slightly. And we have seen a slight cooling in positive momentum. Um, but while we, we hold north of this red line here, the trending moving average, which comes into play at 7,491, it's likely that the outlook is going to remain positive. And should we, should we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play just north of 7,600. And if we go beyond that, le- that, that, that metric, uh, that level, we could be looking at back up towards 7,700. Uh, if we do have a sizable uh, move to the downside and we, and, we have, and we have a fairly decent break below the trending moving average, we could be looking heading back down towards this region here in around the 7,250 or uh, 7,250 or perhaps even as low as, as down the down low at 7,220. And if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here at 7,188. The DAX continues to be a, in a downward trend. Uh, the DAX has been losing ground essentially uh, since since June. It's been a classic example of a of, of, um, 
of a, of a downward trend. We've seen a fairly steady series of lower highs here. And once again, we're, we're back below. While we remain below this trend line here, which can be drawn through the highs of, of, um, of June, through the highs of July. Notice how the market pushed higher later. Oh, we didn't actually get up, get up as high as, as that trend line. We did, we did see in, in uh, active resistance yet again in late September. So while we remain south of this trend line here, it's, it's, it's possible we could see uh, the negative move in the DAX continue. And if you do look to continue, if you do look to continue to the downside in the DAX, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in around the 12,120 region, or as, or as possibly even down as low as 12,000 itself. Uh, if you do have a fairly sizable break to the upside in the DAX, and we do manage to take out this trend line here, we could be looking heading back up towards 12,500 or perhaps up as high as 12,600. And notice how of the 12,600 market did manage to act as both support and resistance uh, throughout the summer months. The U.S. markets are in far better shape, as, is, as I said at the start of the video. We're expecting the Dow Jones and the and, and the and the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 to actually all open higher in the session. So as you can see here, the big picture for for the last few months has been very much moved moved very much to the upside on the Dow Jones. We're looking at pushing higher yet again. Uh, so the solid upward trend for, for the last number of months. If you look continue to push on higher over here, we could be looking at targeting retargeting the all time high. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards if we, if we print separate the new all time highs. The next kind of big psychological number to keep an eye out for to the upside will of course be uh, twenty seven thousand. Move to the downside, may find some support from this area here, which comes into play at 26,330. And if you go south of that, it may even find some support coming to play in around the 26,000 mark. And the possibly even that, that as low down as this blue line here at the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 25,871. Notice how the 50 moving average did act, act as fairly decent support back in mid August. And if a metric has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely it will actually get a support again in the future. Take a look now at the S&P 500. We are opening higher and we could be looking at retesting the all-time highs. The US Open is, is uh, cash open is, is in about two hours time. Once again, US, the S&P 500 has been in a solid upward trend, a uh, nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And if we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at uh, heading back up towards 2,941. And if we go beyond that, we could be, we'll be then printing fresh all-time highs. And we could be looking at heading up towards 2,950, 60, 70, so on and so forth. Uh, Moves to the downside, may find some support from this region here, which would be um, just north of the 2,900 mark. And if we go south of that, we may find some support coming to play in around here. Uh, which come into play uh, in uh, 2,864. Turning our attention now to what's going on in the gold market. So gold continues to be in a downward trend. Gold's been in effectively a fairly solid downward trend since April. So a classic example of lower lows and lower highs. Come uh, mid mid uh, mid August, we did see the the gold market had a fairly decent rebound. It got north of 1,200, but it's, it's spent a lot of time in around the 1,200 region. And as you can see here, on more than a, on a couple of occasions, it ran into this blue line here, the 50 moving average, but never really quite managed to actually get above it. And well, as you can see here, we're back below the 50 moving average. We've seen the market sell off in the recent sessions. We've seen a fairly decent uh, increase in negative momentum. So as the underlying market's moving lower, we're seeing an increase in negative momentum. So the, neg the rise in negative momentum confirms the uh, the downward move we're seeing uh, in the gold market. So we could see the gold press on lower from here. And we could look head back down towards this area here at 1175. And if we go south of 1175, we could be looking heading back down towards 1160. Uh, we, we would have to have, have to have a fairly de decent break north of this blue line here. This 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 12.012. And if we do go north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards 12.25 or perhaps even up to 12.36. Taking a look now at what's going on in the oil market. Starting off with uh, with WTI. Uh, WTI has been in a fairly decent upward trend since effectively mid-August. Classic example of kind of higher highs and higher lows. Brent has obviously managed to, to print fresh uh, new four-year highs, uh, which which come out to in a second. And the kind of the upward move in the Brent market has also been dragging WTI up as well. But WTI hasn't gotten hasn't, hasn't quite gotten to multi-year highs just yet but if you continue to push on higher from here 
we could be looking at heading back up towards the $75 per barrel region. And if you go north of that, we would then be in the territory of heading levels not seen since late 2014, hence fresh four-year highs, should we see it. Uh, any moves to the downside in WTI may find some support in around this area here, 72.50 or even down at 61, sorry, apologies, at 71 spot 69 or as low down as the 70 figure itself. As I mentioned, Brent crude hit a four-year high not too long ago. Let's take a look at the chart now. So we saw four-year highs um, on Brent crude on, on, on Friday. The market's been in a fairly decent upward trend for the last number of months. If we could do continue to press on higher from here, the next big kind of psychological number to keep an eye for would be $85 per barrel. If we do manage to do drift low, we could find some support coming to play in this area here in around the 81 spot 53 or perhaps even as low as down as 80 spot 89 and even if you have a decent uh, sell-off support may come into play in this area here at 80 dollars per barrel you know like i said we, we, we've uh, we've recently hit multi-year highs it's been a solid upper trend for months even if, uh, even if you do have a, have a decent uh, move lower to, move lower uh, in, the, in the Brent market, we could see fresh buyers enter the fold because traders are very concerned about future supplies of oil because we're now in October and come early November, the U.S. sanctions on Iran will kick, will, uh, will kick in and Iran is obviously one of the major, major oil producers in the world. As I mentioned, uh, the, Australian, um, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Australian Central Bank, uh, have a interest rate decision uh, overnight. So take a quick look at the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. In fact, I actually did a video on the Australian dollar versus the US dollar only last week and it was posted here to Insights. So, so if you want to find that, you can find that on Insights. Essentially, the Aussie dollar, uh, as the currency pair is known, has been in a downward trend effectively all, all the way through 2018. Classic example of lower lows and lower highs moving all the way along. As you can see here, on a few occasions, the market managed, managed to run into resistance at the this blue line here, the 50 moving average. Some occasions, it didn't actually quite get as high as it, but it has traded um, slightly above it on a number of occasions, but it remains firmly in a downward trend. And while we remain south of this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 0 spot 72.85, it's likely that the downward trend is going to continue. So if we do continue to push on low from here, we could be looking heading back down towards 0 spot 71, or the recent low of 0 spot 70.85. And if you take off the recent low, we could then be heading back down towards the 0 spot 70 region. Uh, it's only if you have a decent move above the this blue line here, the 50 moving average, could we then actually be, um, start to become more confident that the downward trend has come to an end. And if you do manage to kind of press higher from there, ooh, apologies, we could be looking heading, heading back up towards this, this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes to play at 0 spot 73.80. Or as we, we, could, we could also see resistance come into play in this region here in around the 0 spot 74.78. Take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So, so the euro versus the US dollar lost a lot of ground uh, between April and mid-August. But since mid-August, the, the euro has, has, has started to have a bit of a comeback. But in recent sessions... We can see here that the uh, the euro has become a weaker again. So we saw higher high, higher low, higher high, but now we're seeing the market push lower yet again. So if we manage to hold above this area here, which and you know, on this 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 region here at one spot fifth one spot fifteen ten one spot fifteen, if you could hold above that, we could see uh, potential for the euro euro dollar to kind of push on higher yet yet again. And if you do that, we, we could be looking at retesting uh, the late. The late, well, the, the late September highs of the kind of, of uh, one spot 18.15, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking any back up towards the one spot 15. Apologies, one spot 15, one spot 18.50, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking any back up towards the 120 region. Moving to the downside, if you do have a size of break below the one spot 15.10 or one spot 15 area in around here. Uh, we could be looking heading back up down towards the August low of 1 spot 13. And finally, taking a look at the pound versus the US dollar. Similar situation where the pound started lo losing ground versus the, the US dollar in in April, but has managed to have a fairly decent comeback since um, since mid-April. You know, we can see here the market started to make started to have a few kind of higher highs, but once again, uh, 
the strength of the US dollar has, has hit the British pound. Also a bit of uncertainty in relation to Brexit negotiations that are going on as well. But ultimately, while we remain north of this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at one spot 29.83, if we can hold above that, it's likely we could see uh, the the recent positive move continue in the pound versus the US dollar. And if we manage to, to push on higher from here, we could really head up towards get 132.50 or the mid-September high of 1 spot 32.96 on that 98. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up toward this area here at 1 spot 33.61. Uh, most of the downside, if you have a sizable break below the 130 or 129 spot 83 level here, we could be looking heading back down towards uh, 1 spot 29, 1 spot 28.95, or down to the um, early September low of 1 spot 27.85. And if you go south of that, or could be looking any back down towards the August low of 1 spot 26.61. And just before I finish, uh, finish the video, uh, if you have any commentary on this video or any of the other videos we've uh, produced here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.